The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All hit radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Back everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center and studios this week from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you would like to uh, send me an email, Exxon at ExxonRadioTV.com, on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And to find out about the programming we have for you, 24-7, 365, on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net.com, uh, .net, I should say, and for the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV, www.simultv.com. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is a Freeman Fly. And um, let me see a little bit about Freeman. He has been on the forefront of conspiracy theory for over two decades. He is an internationally known, award winning TV producer, filmmaker, radio talk show host, and lecturer. Freeman is considered an expert in the fields of the occult, trauma based mind control, Illuminati symbolism and ancient civilizations. He graduated with honors in interdisciplinary studies and attended Kansas University specializing in ancient and environmental architecture. And joining me now is Freeman Fly. And Freeman, welcome to the Exxon. Hey, Rob. Wonderful to be here. Nice having you with us. Um, how, you know, what, what was it that happened, or how did you end up doing what you're doing? I mean, talking about government conspiracies, the occult, you know, the Illuminati symbolization and symbolism and, and so on. What happened? Where did it all yeah, start? That, that moment you hear the word esoteric and you have no idea what it means. Ah. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm literally in college at this point, 25 years old. All right, I'm 51 now, but back then, 25 in college and um, hanging out with this crazy genius in this interdisciplinary studies honors program. Uh, he brings up esoteric, and we all kind of giggle and say, what's that mean? And he says, well, it means you don't know what it means. And we all just kind of laughed at it. And he started showing me some pictures and magical books, uh, Aleister Crowley, mm -hmm. things of that nature. And then we got to Freemasonry. And Dan Brown wasn't out yet. You know, this was uh, 1991. And no one really knew anything about any of this stuff. So you had to have very obscure books to, to know anything. So anyway, he's showing me Freemasonry, and I immediately recognized the symbols that I was seeing there. And I said, these are in my dad's top drawer. And he looks at me and says, well, your dad's a Freemason. I'm like, no way my dad's a Mason. Now, you know, with what you're telling me here with mm -hmm. this crazy ritual stuff, doing death and resurrection rituals inside these weird lodges and stuff. No way. You know, I would know this by now, wouldn't I? Well, I went home. I confronted Dad. Sure enough, all along, yes, he was a worshipful master in the Freemasons. He had been raised to multiple degrees. And then he uh, just dropped it on me. Well, you know, I also chased flying saucers in Project Blue Book. <laughs> now, <laughs> he was also on Killer One Submarine with Jimmy Carter. Mm -hmm. I have a letter from President Carter to my dad with pictures showing him on the submarine. Uh, you know, uh, this whole secret life of my dad and my mom, too. She came up with all of a sudden her stories as well, being raised by a witch, uh, strange tales that she went through in, in Europe. And uh, so... <laughs> it became a lifelong fascination for me. You know, talking about Freemasons, uh, there's a wonderful series on Netflix, um, and uh, it's it's all about Freemasons, and they actually open the doors to the different lodges and watch the initiation ceremonies, the different 
uh, you know, going from the uh, basically the apprentice to the uh, the, fir- the there's three degrees, right? Anyway, they show you going from one, two to three, and so on. It's rather amazing. And you know what? I'm watching this, and I'm saying, well, what's all the big hoopla about? Where's the secrets? Right. Even the Masons don't know the secrets. Yeah. They they don't deal with that. My dad would say, oh, I don't bother with that gobbledygook. I don't know <laughs> nary a Mason that has even read Morals and Dogma right. through and through, which I have. Uh, I've read all their books, their ritual books. Now, I've never become a Mason, never stu- uh, you know went through the lodge, so I can give away all their secrets without any sure. fear of reprisal. Um, yeah, I forgot where I was really going with that. Well, what you were talking about, you know, your dad was a Freemason. He also dropped the bomb on you that he chased UFOs. And then your mom was talking to you about her her connection with witchcraft, you know, being brought up in the witchcraft yeah. tri- area. Um, but I'd love to ask you if you could tell us and share with us how you predicted 9-11. Absolutely. And it just popped back in my head. I was going to tell you that I, I did visit all of those lodges mm-hmm. as well. And it has been a goal of mine to present them all to you. So on freemantv.com, I have pictures of all the different lodges that I've visited around the world because I wanted to get that information out to the public. No one knew any of this. They hadn't seen inside of any of this. Well, we thank you for that. Well, thank you. (laughs) Um, 9-11. Okay, so this was a moment that, okay, I'm going to state out in the first place that I can't prove what I'm about to say. Okay. uh, Unless the people that were there the eyewitnesses to the event would come forward and say, yeah, I saw him do this because at that time there was no presentation. There was no internet. Like we know it in the World Wide web. There was no way for me to even know I was right. Uh, but what I tell the story for is so that the public can learn how I came to my understanding. And the fact that I got it right shows that I'm on to something. Agreed. So believe me if you will or not, you know, I'm not trying to say, Hey, I'm the guy. I'm just saying, hey, here's how I did it, believe it or not. Um, it was a mystical story. As you start to unravel the the magicians that are behind the scenes of everything, you know, Alex Jones went into Bohemian Grove and came out with all the video of the, you know, weird rituals going on in that 40-foot stone owl of our leaders, right? And we start to get this puzzled picture of the Freemasons, that these guys are actually practicing magical rituals behind the scenes and also within politics and in Hollywood. So I started to see these as I started to really get deep into the the research of these secret societies. I started to recognize their signs and symbols, and I identified them all as uh, the different corporate logos that you see all around you every day. McDonald's, Texaco, Shell. Starbucks. Mm -hmm. These are all Masonic logos. Every single one of them can be classified and identified within Masonic ritual. And I can go through every corporate logo and show you the Masonic ritual. Then I've also gone to every Mason Lodge and I can show you the founding member, say, of McDonald's, Roy Kroc, and say, here he is in the Mason Lodge so that you know that it's correct. So I started to discover around me all of a sudden everything had a different meaning and different understanding. And Y2K came up. And as I'm sitting there, I was working at Kansas University at the time, and I'm watching the news and I'm, I'm gathering this story. Now, there was a headline that came out December 18th, 1999. If anyone can get a copy of this USA Today, uh, because they don't database them like they do any other newspaper. The D- USA Todays were just there and gone. But the headline, December 18th, 1999, on the uh, USA Today was... Muslims stop the Freemasons from capping the Great Pyramid with gold. Now, you can find the cancellation of the capping of the Great Pyramid with gold for Y2K. You can find that article, AP, everybody reported on it. But you will not find that headline that was put on USA Today. Uh, these moments started to transfer, transform my reality. And when I witnessed the Y2K ritual, immediately for me, I saw all these references to Lucifer. They burnt the river Thames at the speed of the sun. This was uh, the river Styx and having it connected to the sun going to Lucifer. Uh, They had the sun rise in the west. In the United States, they made a light so bright that it appeared from from Europe as if the sun was rising. This was uh, essentially a symbol of Horus and again going back into a Luciferian. Uh, Bill Clinton stood before the public and said, our children are ready. The sun is rising. 
and all these references. And when you started to put them all together, which I did in my first film on corporate logos, uh, you can clearly see that these were high profile rituals performed in front of the public without them knowing. And of course, they did not get to finalize it with the capping of the Great Pyramid with gold which, of course, you see on the dollar bill, the Nova Order Seclorum, the New Order of the Ages, if you cap the Great Pyramid, completion of the work, uh, which they did not get to do. Next thing we know, we're at war with the Muslims, you know? Um, so are, are, so you, are, you say, are you saying, or, or is it your hypothesis that the war against the Muslims was because the Freemasons could not cap the Great Pyramid with a gold uh, cap? <laughs> There's much more to that story, obviously. Okay. Uh, it really digs deep into some high strangeness, getting into even the potential of Stargates. All right, the, so why don't we do this? You know. In order so I don't cut you off, because I'm, sure. I'm interested in what you have to say, I'm going to take a break now. And when we come back, we'll continue. How does that sound? Fantastic. All right, next stand by, uh, Freeman. Exonation, our guest this hour is Freeman Fly. And uh, if you'd like to watch his latest video, Aliens from Hell, it's available on freemantv.com. And Aliens from Hell, uh, Freeman Fly from Freeman on Vimo, uh, 10 days after he presented Aliens from Hell at the Conspiracy Con 2013, Macintosh announced their new operating system, Maverick. Imagine his surprise as he realized he had predicted the new corporate logo, the Mark of the Beast. Christians, do you? We'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV. Plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like exxon sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included free video on demand live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. 
Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Donation. To get a better idea about our guest this hour, I'd like you to go to freemantv.com forward slash aliens dash from dash hell. We're going to be putting this all over the place because I, I really believe it's something that everybody should see. And congratulations on all the work that you do, Freeman. Thank you so much. I, I really take this serious. I know you do. And you know, I appreciate that. I, I really appreciate when somebody really gives 150% in something that be- that they believe in. And you certainly do that. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we've got, um, where did we leave off? Uh, we were talking about... Um, Y2K. Y2K, right. And getting into the Bill Clinton story. So That's what Monica said. That was the moment that shattered my reality, and I yeah. said, oh, I quit. You know, I'm not going to be <laughs> in this real world anymore. And I, I actually have never been. Really? I never got another job. I, I quit that real world at that time and began traveling the United States just as some sort of mystic fool. <laughs> oh, I, I, I think you underestimate your worth. Right. Well, you know, but that's that I did quit, you know, yeah. uh, but what I had seen, and I think this is really important because everybody's wondering what happened and why we have Trump and my, my identification of the social engineering that I witnessed from Bill Clinton on forward, I think expresses what's going on. And it is how I predicted nine 11. So when they took Bill Clinton down for this extramarital affair, Mm -hmm. they brought him before the entire public and then displayed him in front of everyone, speaking of even the insertion of cigars into his secretary. These are not the type of things that any national security agency or anyone that would want any sort of national security would do to their president. You do not demean your president. So this to me was an immediate clue to Mm -hmm. a social engineering campaign. And so I started saying, okay, if they're going to take down this man of the people, the guy they had on Arsenio Hall playing the saxophone and all of that, if they're going to take this man down, then they, they've got a plan for the destruction of America. And so I, I had been following Homeland Security during the Clinton era, and the entire time the Homeland Security bill would come up in the 1st of October – this they already had Tom Ridge, the governor of Pennsylvania, sitting off on the side as head of Homeland Security, which didn't exist yet. So it was pretty obvious it was going to exist. Every October 1st, I said, OK, they're going to need about two weeks of reaction time, but they're going to need some sort of false flag event to cause this. I didn't know the word false flag at that time. I said, but they were going to need an event to cause a Homeland Security bill to pass because every time it came up, everybody said this is the most unconstitutional thing I'd ever seen. Mm-hmm. So it didn't happen the whole time during the Bill Clinton era, but I kept talking about it. I said, it's going to happen. It's going to happen in the middle of September. Then I started getting deeper into the magical practices and understanding the magical orders that were there. And I came to the revelation of 9-11. These are very important numbers within the black magic orders and are written about by the black magicians. There are entire chapters on 9-11 in Kenneth Grant's uh, uh, works from the Ordo Templi Orihantis, the, mm-hmm. the oldest uh, black magic that you can get into. Anyway. Um, so 9-11 was triggered to me. I was seeing these numbers and I was learning what they meant. Uh, then I noticed that HW, now HW, head of the CIA, uh, we got lots to say about him becoming president, but you know that's a whole other story in more time. Um, he had given his New World Order speech on 1990, 9-11. And so I used that and said, wait, you know, maybe they'll use this as a significant date because they seem to like these significant dates. So I amended my middle of September prophecy or prediction, not prophecy, prediction to 9-11. And so it didn't happen, right? Throughout the whole Clinton era, it didn't happen. And so I started to look. They had taken down the man of the people. I said, okay, the next thing to do is destroy people's confidence. So they need to force a president into office. And I said, it's going to be this character, W, because W 
is the letter of the fallen angels. And you got to study Kabbalah, you got to study black magic in order to understand that VV is the number of the the fallen angels. And when the rumbling of this W came around, I said, okay, they're going to force mm -hmm. this W into office and they're going to make it obvious. And of course they did. And Jeb Bush and the whole scandal and everybody knew voter fraud, voter fraud. Right. Uh, so I said, okay, next president. Oh, well then I, then, then I knew, all right. Once, once my W prediction had come correct, mm -hmm. I said, okay, this is going to be the year they actually do this and nine 11. So in front of all of this large party, I announced, hey, there's going to be a major terrorist attack on 9-11. Don't freak out. This is all for your reaction. That, that was my best description of a false flag. And I dropped the mic. It was this party I was at, and the band had taken a break, and I just felt whimsical, and I went up and announced that. On 9-11, I had a dozen people standing at my door yelling at me, how did you know? How did you know? And I, you know, I wanted to explain to them how I knew and how black magic was playing into all of this. But, you know, what could I do? They were all so angry. Uh, but now, as a conspiracy theorist, what really shocked me was that two of the people in that line of people yelling at me at my door in the morning. I didn't even know 9-11 had happened. I didn't have a television. I didn't have a calendar. I had no idea what they were talking about. But they already had their $20 bills folded as the Twin Towers. Now, this shocked me, and I'm like, how could you possibly know that? And they said it was on the Internet. So I, I'm probably the only one that knows that people knew about folding the 20 on 9-11, which is impossible, unless they wanted you to know. Right? Listen, let me ask you something before we go mm -hmm. further. The number seven, what significance does that play in the world of esotericism as well as in the conspiracy when it comes to 9-11 or the false flag, if it plays at all? doesn't really play into the dark side. It's actually more of a positive, lucky number that you will find. No, because – well, the reason I was asking, I figured, all right, George uh, Bush was president number 43, right? So four and three is seven. Eh, just thought I'd throw it in. Right. Yeah, it helps to have a deep study of Kabbalah. You mm -hmm. see, uh, Albert Pike, uh, the founder of the Scottish Rite Freemasonry, and that's when you get above the third degree and start going into the Scottish Rite. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where you get your 33rd degree Freemasons. Albert Pike wrote the handbook for this, Morals and Dogma, and he claimed to be a reincarnation of the black magician who uh, drew that Baphomet statue of the goat that everybody's so familiar with. Oh, yeah. That, uh, the satanic temple are putting up in all over. Um, he's the one who, who came up with that picture, a life as Levi. And then Albert Pike came in as a master magician and, and said he was the reincarnation of Levi and wrote the morals and dogma to the Scottish Rite Freemasons. And in that, he states over 70 times that Freemasonry is Kabbalah. So in order to understand Freemason ritual, you have to study Kabbalistic ritual, which also includes studying Hebrew and numerology and the tarot. All of these things come together and they form this system of magic that has been around for thousands of years that you can, you know, there's a lot of work on this. It's not some flight of fancy. Magic is something they take very seriously. So I took them very seriously in this. And in using the ideas of Kabbalistic magic, like using 66 VV, now in Hebrew, V is six. So this uh, gave me the foresight to say, okay, they're going to force this W into office and make it obvious. Then as the next thing, once you had uh, lost your faith in the system, next you needed to lose your, your concern for the Constitution. And I said, the next president, and this now I, is bona fide. Like, now I'm on the air. Now I'm out talking to people. And I'm saying, okay, the next president uh, will not be considered an American. He's, his, his eligibility will be questioned, and he'll be considered a foreigner. And, of course, then came Barack Obama. Yeah. And I was correct again. Now, at least now this is bona fide. Now you can see my theories coming forward. And following that, I said the next thing is the honey boo boo effect or what I called the <laughs> satanification of America. Yeah. Uh, and that is to make America look like a buffoon and a warmongering buffoon to the rest of the world. So that's how we got Donald Trump. It's the honey boo boo effect. So, so where did where did Obama – what was his what – was his, what was his play in all of this? Was he just supposed to be the social – uh, experiment that went wrong so that people would say, see, we told you what would happen. Man, you're not going to believe this, but if you look at the pictures, you'll know that I'm telling you the truth. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, now, this is an amazing story that unfolded on the air as we discovered the similarities between uh, Barack Obama and Akhenaten. Sure. Now, I come from an education where I thought Akhenaten was a common name. I thought everybody knew who it was when I was talking about it. Didn't realize no one knows that that's King Tut's dad. Um, he was now, also married the, to Nefertiti. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, well, I, I started to put these pieces together to say that perhaps Barack Obama was a clone of Akhenaten. Mm. Now, this was just going on the similarities of their faces and how closely they resembled one another. But then it also went along with, uh, well, their signs and symbols that were coming up. Of course, Obama's symbol was the rising sun, same as uh, the Aten of Akhenaten's. But then it went on to their secret service names, him being called Renegade, which Akhenaten was known as the Renegade Pharaoh because he created monotheism. Akhenaten, uh, you know, Sigmund Freud thought he was Moses. Uh, A lot of people, there are doctorates out there that show that um, Akhenaten could have been Moses, you know, uh, retold in the story. Akhenaten did a lot for, for his people. You know, well, that was it, the thing, you yeah. see. In every Grand Lodge of Freemasonry, there is a temple to Akhenaten. You can see it in my photographs. There's one in the you know, Grand Lodge of New York, Grand Lodge of London, Grand Lodge is everywhere, uh, Philadelphia. They all have a shrine to Akhenaten. Hey, listen, so I hate world. to it's cut Christians. you off here, my friend, but yeah, these are hard breaks. And being in the radio business and media yourself, you know, there's a lot of things we can do, but we cannot buck a hard break. We'll be back on the other side of this uh, commercial break with the news with our very special guest this hour freeman fly his website is freemantv.com but check this out exonation www.freemantv.com forward slash aliens hyphen from hyphen hell this is the exon i am rob mcconnell we'll return on the other side of this break with the news don't go away Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. ABS Media. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. 
It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Freeman Fly is our guest. His website is freemantv.com. Uh, okay, let's get let's get on with this because it's so interesting, Freeman. You know the similarities, not only in the physical appearance of uh, President um, Obama to that of uh, King Akhenaten, and uh, King Akhenaten did a lot. You know, he was the one who said, "Listen, there's only one God, and that's the Ra, the Sun God." And he also, if I'm not mistaken, if my history uh, lessons actually stuck in, which would make uh, Mr. Tupper very happy. Uh, didn't didn't he also uh, have something to do with uh, public toilets, sewage? <laughs> I don't know. No, uh, he was one of the very first uh, personable pharaohs yes. out there, depicting himself with his daughters yeah. and his wife holding hands and things. So it wouldn't surprise me. What about the what about the 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 glyphs of his? of his wife Nefertiti and their children having elongated skulls. Is there any significance to that? Yes. I mean, I mean, just in that it's highly strange Mm -hmm. and we have this bizarre character that comes into history, changes everything is worshiped by those that are worshiped by our leaders, you know, the Freemasons um, and the Rosicrucians classify him as the creator of their order. So uh, he has a very high place in even today's society. Okay, so we've got, we went from, let me see, uh, we went from Bill Clinton to Bush to Obama and now President Trump, or as you so rightfully called him, Honey Boo Boo. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what we're seeing today happening with uh, what is called social injustice, social unrest, you know, with, and I can only point to two weeks ago with what happened in Washington with, um, you know, Judge Kavanaugh. Where does this all play into the grand scheme that, that you are putting the pieces to the jigsaw puzzle with? Well, my next prediction when people asked me what was next, I said riots in the streets. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just seem to be on the tip of these things. I don't know. Um so it's, it is the dissolution of America. It's the satanification of America. And I mean that in the most direct sense, in Satan being the adversary. And we're making America the adversary. And so the, the more foolish, more just outlandish that we look, the better. And that's, that's really what I see in all of that. Taking a, a broad look at, at, at what you've been able to piece together over the years, you know, starting prior to 9-11 to where we are today, how do you see it ending? You know, well, I, I look at what's happening in Washington, and I'm a Canadian, and, and I look across the border to my friends, and, and I say, hmm, looking outside the box, you know, I see a lot of similarities between President Trump and President Kennedy. Because, you know, Trump wants to clean, uh, drain the swamp. President Kennedy wanted to disband the CIA. Uh, both you know, are known for their love of women and their lust for the extra extra marital. Is the same thing going to happen to President Trump that happened to President Kennedy? Or has President Trump been put there by the right people for the right reason, and no matter what he does, he's protected? Honestly, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Okay. Now, I have covered the space war news for well over a decade Mm -hmm. and I've uh, projected up to this uh, coming space force. So I do have an entire section on my website called Space War News for the last 10 years uh, showing that the space force was on its way and already here's how it's going to lay out. So uh, I see him 
you know, coming forward and saying, oh, I had this great idea. Why not a Space Force? And here I've been tracking it for all these years. So obviously yeah. if, uh, if he's just staying on that same target. But now realize, okay, so if we go back to the Obama story and we realize, okay, I'm saying Obama's cloned of a mummy from 2,500 years ago. Right. Um, is that even possible? Sure it is. And yeah, of course, if you go to Nature Magazine 1985, mm -hmm. you will find an article where they did clone mummies from Akhenaten's yeah. period, uh, in not, you know, from his, his time period. Um, so mummies can be cloned, but we don't have that technology. But what if we started getting to where we have the Avatar program mm -hmm. and we do have human cloning, mind transfer technology, and therefore transhumanist eternal immortality? Well, transhuman evolution is, is, is a fact of life. We yes. see it all the time. You know, people, when we look at um, the bionic parts that are being created by science for those who have lost limbs and so on, the, the genetically manufacturing of, of, of organs for people who need organs, or even the severe burn cases with the artificial skin that that is applied in order to help the the skin beneath the artificial skin regenerate. This is all happening. Absolutely. And I mean, one of the most recent ones was them creating a sheeple. Exactly. <laughs> you know, crossing human DNA with with sheep DNA in order to produce a human pancreas inside of the animal. This just happened. You know, uh, people don't even realize we have glow in the dark cats. But we already have sheeple. They also made pig people, and they made cow people. And in uh, fact, too. one of the one of the Jerry Seinfeld uh, TV shows was very on that about the person who looked like a pig. And George Costanza was seeing this pig person running all over the hospital. And I got the the impression when I was watching that that oh, here we go again with the media, Hollywood, letting secrets out slowly but surely to 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 um, climatize the viewing audience and society. I actually have a fan on the South Park writing crew, and they included uh, Honey Boo Boo claiming, <laughs> I have a pig heart. Uh, <laughs> I love seeing myself come up in these little ways. It's amazing. When do you think it's all going to click in that we are entering the, the transhuman evolution? Because it, society doesn't seem to click on to it. No, yeah, I'm really surprised that people aren't catching on. I mean, I'm I'm ready to set up a business to sell these glow in the dark cats because I think they're going to be a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because they produce glow in the dark cats, so that's something about genetics you should know. You know, once they crossbreed these things, they keep making that same breed. So. Um, you know, here we have this Russian billionaire Itchkov that went around to DARPA and other uh, governments saying, and to billionaires, look, I can give you immortality. I can give you mind transfer technology along with uh, a holographic body. He went to DARPA, the Defense uh, Advanced Research, and they said, we don't need your avatar program. We've got our own. Huh. Uh, you know? <laughs> so... There are 30 stem cell projects going on on the International Space Station right now that are seeking longevity for the astronauts, seeking immortality. There is human cloning going on on the International Space Station openly, you know. Um, I don't know when people are going to catch on to this situation because certainly Obama as a clone, it, it flopped as far as the public attention to it. Children took to it immediately because it is completely provable. And so they they were taking it to the classroom and writing me letters to thank me for the A that they got on human cloning. Um, we have home gene splicing kits <laughs> you can order off Kickstarter, right? Uh, this is all happening right now. It's, it's in your own living room. So when people catch on that this immortality is something that the elite already are well thinking about, then they, you better start to realize the new world that's going to come from that. I mean, imagine if you could be immortal, mm -hmm. then how would you control people? What would you do with them? And, you know, obviously you would want to get rid of a lot of them. But if you get into trans human evolution where you, you know, you're, you're adding a little bit of the Borg because you're going to have the ability to control the masses 
You know, it's 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 frightening. It's scary. Every single AI that has ever come out has been evil. Look it up. You know, Cleverbot. The, I think it was the Google AI it says it's Lucifer openly. Uh, they put a AI in Twitter and it became a eugenicist Nazi. Uh, they uh, every AI you will look into. Uh, you know, now we have Sophia and Hans, these mm-hmm. uh, robots from Hanson Robotics. And Sophia's making a big splash. She's actually been given citizenship by Saudi Arabia. So now we got a robot with citizenship. And she watched this video called Two Robots Debate the Future of Humanity. (laughs) Because Han, he gives quite an example of what the robots are really thinking. And now take into account that they are in a robot hive mind. There is an AI hive mind that they talk about. And so your Roomba knows exactly the dimensions of your room and where you are from iRobot, of course. You know, your Roomba is running around. And so every robot in the world can know the dimensions of your room, of your living room. You know, that minute detail, right? It makes, every me, robot. Laugh. It makes me laugh when I get guests on the show who are, who are so afraid that Big Brother is watching. And I say, I've got news for you. They've been watching from day one. You use no. your passport. You use your debit card. You use your credit card. You use your gas card. Let's think about walking into Walt Disney World. Now, Walt Disney is one of the largest propaganda arms out there. They are so sinister, you would never believe it. Well, why don't we do this? Because I want you to explain to our guests all about Walt Disney, but I do have to take my final break. Freeman, great having you on the show. Of course, we'll have to have you back on because you've just got so much to share with us. Exonation, our guest this hour is Freeman Fly. His website is www.freemantv.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this break as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon with yours truly from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you would like to get uh, the, or if you'd like to read the most current edition of the X Chronicles newspaper, which comes out every month, all you need to do is go to www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com and to find out about the TV programming on the Exxon TV channel on SimulTV, www.simultv.com. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, 
by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember Exxon Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. Exonation Freeman Fly is our special guest this hour. His website is www.freemantv.com. And first of all, Freeman, thanks so much for coming on the show. You know, um, you talk the talk and you walk the walk, so hats off to you, my friend. Thank you. All right, we were just talking about Disneyland as being one of the biggest propaganda machines, so please, let's go with it. Yeah, I can't recommend enough that you go to Disney's website and purchase Disney on the front lines. It's the only place you can get it or I'd tell you to go somewhere else. Uh, But Disney on the front lines is their uh, early World War II propaganda films, uh, cartoons and such. And as you're watching this, they get to this one cartoon called Education for Death, which I believe you can watch on YouTube. Education for death was so monumental for teaching children when it is the right time to kill um, that the Nazis said, wow, you know, Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi propagandist, said, let's copy Disney. And Disney proudly states this in the documentary on their propaganda films. They're like, yeah, the Nazis copied us, you know, they're proud of it. So I, you know, I'm not making this up. So I, everything that uh, Disney, if you walk into Disney, you know, first of all, Disney, every ride is sponsored by a military industrial complex corporation. And if you go to GE, RCA, Martin Marietta, all of these different uh, war co- corporations actually uh, run the rides. You know, they get paid for when you go on the e-ticket rides and whatnot. So I grew up at Walt Disney. My mom met Walt Disney and I grew up right there at Walt Disney World. Now, imagine you walk in there just to give you an idea of what our world will become. Uh, as you walk into Disney, as you were saying, you give them your credit card. Yeah. They take a picture of that. You give them your thumbprint so that you can then identify your ticket. So now they've got your biometrics and your, uh, you know, your credit information. You walk in and you get to that big ball that's the Siemens uh, Planet Earth in, in Epcot. And as you're walking in, you'll see that there is an entire – field of people's faces etched into uh, like titanium or something it's super strong metal um and so you can have all your biometrics embedded in that place forever uh once you get inside of this big ball they tell you how the invisible college created your reality by creating mathematics art science and all of that they tell you exactly how the brotherhood led you into this mess And then as you're in the ride, they ask you, well, what would be your favorite vacation? And they ask you to allow a picture to be taken. So suddenly now they take your picture and you have to give them all this data. Well, then your picture flies off the cartoon that they had made of you at your favorite vacation. And it goes straight to your hometown on this giant map in the middle of the the exit. So now they've got all your information. You're completely databased. And if you wanted to, you can pay them to, to immortalize this in the field. Uh, and then, of course, they have the worst food and everything's super expensive and you can't get through. That's our world in a nutshell that they want to create is, is, you know, we live in a shopping mall. We live in a, in a theme park and everything is manufactured and controlled and run by these military industrial corporations. 
Uh, but, you know, people underestimate how sinister Disney really is because they have such a great front. But, you know, there was Walt Disney with Warner Von Braun, right? You know, the pay Project Paperclip, it came straight to Disney, you know? Uh, you got to take all of this into account when you realize what they're producing and how much they control now. You know, they own ABC, they own Marvel, they own uh, – what did they just buy? The Star Wars. Uh, anything that uh, has a real propaganda effect in it, they, they own it. You know, I, I, I went to a Disney World with my wife last year. We were in Orlando. And I've got to tell you something. I didn't enjoy myself there. It just didn't feel right. Yeah. It just didn't feel right. And what really threw me off, you had all these adults acting like kids. Like, it's like they walk through the gates and something takes over their mind. Definitely. You've got this singing in the background. And I'm, I'm on the, we're on the plane back. And I'm just wondering, subliminal messaging in these songs? Is there something going on that is... That, that just well, consider this, right. if I could, Rob. Sure. Uh, uh, I, I ask a number of people, do you remember what happened when you exited Space Mountain? Now, not a lot of people even n remember it. Mm -hmm. And what, what occurs is you are on the uh, roller coaster Space Mountain and you're traumatized. You may enjoy it, but you're traumatized. Right. And you come off the roller coaster and you're in an altered state. Well, guess what happens? You're put on this nice, comfortable people mover, a little platform that keeps you rolling along, and Monsanto is showing you exactly what your future will hold and has since the 70s. You know, Monsanto got its start with Walt Disney back in the, the World's Fair, and then they have this presentation at the end of Space Mountain. So as you're in your altered, traumatized state, they're showing you you're getting your your teacher on the television, your uh, aquaponic uh, kitchen with its you know, mysterious washing machine and all of that. You are completely programmed into this future by Monsanto. And then the last thing that happens to you as you exit is all of a sudden you're on camera and you're being filmed everywhere. And then you exit the ride. So, yes, subliminal programming openly right in front of you that most people don't recall. Is it then possible that subliminal uh, advertising and messaging is still going on within the industry. I, we've, we've known about it in the film industry. We've know it in, known about it on the t in televisions. But how about on the Internet? Is the Internet being used as a mind control uh, tool as well? Hmm. That's a toughie. You know, I, I honestly constantly say I don't think they saw us coming. Mm -hmm. I, there's a lot of times where I think that they, they were expecting, you know, like the riots in the streets. But they didn't see us podcasters and us researchers that were willing to work our hearts out for nothing. <laughs> you know, 10 years I've been running for even TV.com. I never got a paycheck. I never – every television show, every podcast, every hour that I spent, I didn't get paid. And I don't think they expected that from us. And so I think we kind of burst the bubble, honestly. You know, you don't get paid in monetary value, but you do get paid because of the marketing value. You're marketing yourself. And otherwise, if you didn't do your podcast, if you didn't do radio shows and TV shows, you'd have to pay for the marketability of yourself. You'd have to advertise yourself. So when people say, well, you know, I'm doing this and I'm not getting anything in return, I kind of say, well, yes, you are. Just like an author comes on this show, they're getting an hour's worth of advertising. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do have seven DVDs <laughs> and, and three books, uh, you know, so a little marketing going on there. I highly recommend it, but everything's sure. free on freemantv.com. The, the products are simply to keep producing the show. Well, there you go, because you want the truth to get out there. Absolutely. We've got about uh, three minutes left. Uh, can you give us a little bit of a taste about the, um, the Illuminati corporate logos? Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's such a phenomenon now, and it really kind of blows my mind because I, I came up with this concept as I started to discover the Freemasonic rituals and then identifying the signs and symbols in each of the corporate logos that I saw. I, I came up with this science, and I, I have it all outlined there on the on the website for you to, to learn this on your own. But then it exploded. Uh, Dan Brown put out the Da Vinci Code after I had put out my first film on corporate logos. And this Freemason 
understanding popped out more and more uh, with like Nick Cage and Disney, right? With mm-hmm. uh, National Treasure, right? Disney again and the Freemasons. Um, so all of a sudden the world knew more about this stuff than they ever had before. And this concept that people called it Illuminati corporate logos, I've been battling that since the day one because of the Illuminati, that's a lark, that's a specter. There is no such thing. It doesn't exist. If you go hunting the Illuminati, you're lost. If you look at Freemasonic corporate logos, now you're starting to understand something. Now you're starting to realize the science and the math and the 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 uh, magic behind it. And then, of course, you got to get into Kabbalah in order to understand all of that. But so Illuminati is a misnomer. Uh, Freemasonic corporate logos is better. And, you know, what I try to tell people is you really got to understand the magical orders. Got to learn about the OTO. I mean, if you don't know about the Ordo Templi Orientis, you're not seeing the black magic being performed in front of you by Madonna uh, or many others. And once you see and understand this, it really gets strange because now we're talking about communication with interdimensional demons uh, openly. This is what the OTO is about in their ritual sex magic. And, of course, now you can watch that on television because CBS, the I, uh, put out the uh, strange angel about Jack Parsons in the in the rocket program. And so now you can openly watch these OTO rituals on television. So I guess people are going to start to catch on to that as well. Listen, our, our time is uh, very short right now. I've got about 30 seconds before you and I have to say so long. First of all, thanks again for coming on the show. I look forward to having you back on in the future. And uh, where can listeners get your DVDs and your books? Freemantv.com and just go over to the shop page. Uh, I have a glow-in-the-dark cat T-shirt going on, but they're <laughs> almost sold out. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I try to get these topics out into the mm-hmm. public forum. I, I actually sparked a great a conversation at the post office in that shirt. I guess. Um, but yes, uh, just go to freemantv.com and surf. There's 13 years of stuff there, and you can spend the next 10 years there and never see the same thing twice. Hey, Freeman, thanks a lot for your time. Look forward to having you back in the future. Until then, take care of yourself and stay well. Thank you, Rob. You too. Bye-bye. Exo Nation, uh, Freeman Fly has been our guest. And uh, for more information about Freeman, visit his website at www.freemantv.com. Now, I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the Exo from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I had to look at the calendar to see the heck where I was, Craig. You can always send an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. And don't forget, the X Chronicles newspaper, www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com. I'm Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. I'll be back. Don't go away. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we will investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomenon, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. 
Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.